Happy Tuesday. My name is Olin. My name's Nick. Welcome into, into the, the dungeon. Only an hour, the coach is stopped by some armed horsemen. They wear the black ship and red crest emblem of Lachlan, the overlord of Ragadorn. In the name of Lachlan, the overlord of Ragadorn, we demand gold in payment for those exit taxes. One gold crown from each of you. The other travellers each place a crown on a small plate and hand it to Lunda. Now what about you two, Jack Rabbits? Pay up! Oh, get on your eye horses, those two feet of yours, and start walking. We're not jackrabbits. We're wolves. Shh, Torrin. Pigs, I mean. Ha <laughs> ha, little piggies. Going to market. Why, you go home. We're going home. Why, well, if you don't pay up, we'll be having some bacon. <laughs> Lando, give me a crown. Why, sorry, Torrin. I don't trust these people, but we're unarmed. Quit your jibber jabber and pay up. So as we are able to pay the tax, we do so, and the coach is allowed to go on its way. Also, we hope, as we turn to section 249. During the course of the afternoon's journey, the brothers chat with their fellow travellers and learn about their backgrounds. Sitting opposite the two brothers are another two brothers, named Ganon and Doria. Oh, I don't trust Ganon already. Mm, yeah, the namesake of the big bad of Legend of Zelda. They are knights in the Order of the White Mountain, warrior lords of Durenor. Wait, 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 wait. Knights of the Order of the White Mountain who have pledged their allegiance to protect the country from raids by bandits and they just paid a fucking gold and didn't protect us from hmm. those rooting two in cowboys. Hmm. Yeah, they're not very protecty, are they? No, trust them even less now. Ganon and Doria own a castle and land near Port Bats. Next to him sits Halvok the Merchant. His nose is swollen and his face badly bruised, thanks to Lachlan, the overlord of Ragador. Little misunderstanding about port taxes, lost him his cargo and most of his gold. Seated by the far door is a priest called Parsion. Like the brothers, he's a summer lending, who has journeyed across the wildlands by coach on his way to Port Vax. Beside the brothers sits a young woman called Vivica. She's a mercenary adventurous who earns a gold by fighting for it and sells her services to the highest bidder. Well, here again, she earns her gold by fighting. Oh, for, yeah, okay. But she didn't fight. I suppose that lord is a menace. No one really dares to face off. Yeah, definitely sounds like it. She's returning to Port Bax, having collected payments for a successful adventure in Ragadon, not willing to reveal their true identity. The lone wolves have pretended to be nothing but simple peasants. Well, lone pigs. Oh yeah, lone so pigs. It does make sense. Pigs, peasants. The travellers seem unaware of the war that now rages in Summerland. We're given no option here, but to turn to section 39. At dusk, the coach stops at an inn on the coast road to Port Bax. The cost of a room for the night is one gold crown for coach passengers and three gold crowns for anyone else. As you are about to enter, coach driver demands to see your ticket. Tickets, please! Looks like we're losing another gold here. We do have the tickets, so do we? Yeah, we, we got tickets and we stowed them away. Okay, so so we have the ticket for port backs, which we do. We turn to section 346. Just going to deduct a gold, or rather a crown, as they're known here, from each of our coin purses. I'm down to two now. Oh, you're looking poor. Mm. The driver nods and hands back the ticket. The inn is warm but poorly furnished. We must eat a meal here which will cost us one gold crown, unless we have a meal in our backpack. Yeah, I'm eating the fruit. Yes. I'm not losing another, another gold crown. <laughs> so, yeah, so am I. The Kai discipline of hunting cannot be used when instructed to eat a meal on your journey for the wildlands, as it is a barren wasteland, inhabited only by creatures called Sals, a weak and cowardly breed of Gyak. As we've paid the one gold crown for the room, 
we're turning to section 280, but not before we remove the last of our fruit. We're now pretty much penniless. Lander has nine gold left. And mealless, so... Well, we've got no meals now. Yeah, mealless. Oh, sorry, mealless. I, I thought you said a meal less, which is also correct, but as you've pointed out, we are mealless. And Torin only has two gold crowns. Not looking good if we have to pay a gold per night on this trip. Yeah, we're going to have to start pickpocketing. Or washing dishes. Hmm. The brothers sleep deeply without being disturbed before rising at dawn, gathering their equipment and joining the others as they board the coach. For two days and nights, the coach follows the trade route across the flat, treeless wildlands. It stops only to allow the driver to sleep. But on the morning of the ninth day of your quest, there is an unfortunate accident. Again, we need to pick a number from the random number table. So as we normally do, the highest will roll again. And then that decides what section we turn to. All right, you want to do the honors first this time? Okay, that's a zero. And I've rolled a seven. This time a zero is a zero instead of a ten. A little confusing this system. So you roll again, Nick, and we'll see where we go. I've rolled an eight this time, which takes us to section 108. One of the wheels jams in a deep rut, and three of the large wooden spokes are shattered. The caravan is forced to stop and replace the wheel before they can continue into port backs. Lander volunteers to help the driver by levering the coach axle with a small tree trunk. In this way, the spare wheel can be slid into position. As he's pushing down the stout branch with all of his strength, the horses suddenly rear up and race forward. The trunk springs back and catches Lander square in the face, knocking him backwards to the ground. He is stunned and loses two endurance points. Lander, are you okay? Oh, my face. Watch out! As Torin calls out, the driver is not so lucky. The coach has run over him, and the poor man dies in Torin's arms. His last words. This was the old accident. I saw... You saw what? You saw what? <sighs> Lander! Lander! Get up! What happened to the driver? He's gone! What do you mean he's gone? He's warned us! This is no accident! Something's amiss here, Lander! Hold on, let me use my sixth sense! We're turning to section 343. The other option would have been to turn to 168 if we do not have this skill. Fortunately for us, Torin does. Lander! Come, come with me! Come with me! Why are you going, Torin? Let's step away! I need to talk to you in private! What is it? What does your sixth sense tell you? One of us was the intended victim of this supposed accident. One of the passengers, Lander, is trying to kill us. Why? Did you just think we're long pigs? I don't know, Lander. I don't know. I just know. I bet it's that damn gun. I think you're right. We should not trust anyone, though. All of them are suspicious. Perhaps it's that mercenary woman. We have to be careful, Lander. We need to keep our wits about us. Here we're not given an option. We just need to turn to section 168. Slowly. One by one, the other travellers appear and stare in shock at the dead man. We must have buried him, says the priest. Lander and Torin nod in their agreement and prepare a grave in which to lay the corpse. As they walk back to the coach, they discuss what should be done. I know the road to pull back. I better drive a coach, volunteers Halvok. I do a hope but we are not a blame for his death, says the priest nervously. It was an act of the gods says Doria. I shall testify to that brother. Lies are never spoken by the Knights of the White Mountain, says Ganon. It is true that in Durinor, a true knight will speak only the truth, whether for his own good or ill. His words seem to reassure the priest, and you are all soon once more on the road heading towards the eastern horizon. It is late in the afternoon when the travellers arrive at a coach station in a small coastal village known as Gorn Cove, which is mainly populated by outcasts, thieves, and sarls. The death of the coachman is met by the villagers with great suspicion, but Doria's words convince them that it was accidental. There is only one inn at the village, a tavern known as a Fallen Hope. Its state of disrepair is typical of all the other hovels in this poor sea village. A room for the night costs one gold crown. Damn, more gold. If we can pay for the room, we turn to section 314. And if we cannot, to section 25. We still have gold. Just about. Just about it. I'm down to one now. And Nick is down to eight. The innkeeper is a thin old man 
with only one eye. He hands the brothers a key and points to the balcony opposite. Number two, the red door. The other travellers each pay the one crown, collect a key, and make their way across the crowded tavern floor towards the stairs. We must make plans for tomorrow, says Doria. The others all nod in agreement. I should just remain here at the bar. In one hour, then we'll decide what to do. As Landa closes the red door of the brother's room, for some reason, he recalls the words of Captain Kelman when they left Homeguard Harbor. This evil treachery will work. The enemy already has plans afoot to thwart your quest. An hour has nearly passed when the brothers are disturbed by a knock at the door. It is the innkeeper, and he is carrying a tray of hot food. With a compliment of one of your old friends, he says and leaves before they can ask which one. The brothers are not eating today, and the food smells most appetizing. Don't touch that food, Torrin. <sighs> yes, I know. Let me go outside and hunt. I'll find something. We're in the wilds. You think you'll find anything? Well, the book says I've got only the option to use my Kai discipline of hunting here. But you sense that somebody's trying to kill us. This would be far too easy. Very suspicious as well that somebody just buys us food. No, no. This is poisoned. For sure. All right, then. I'll wait here. Be careful, Landa. Oh, shit. I'm going alone. With, with no weapons. So we're turning to section 290 as Landa uses his Kai discipline of hunting. The food smells delicious. Much like the fruit, doesn't look like I'm going hunting. <laughs> we should have known. And although the food smells delicious, Landon notices something. Torrin, there's three drops of clear liquid here. Not on the tray. Mm. It looks like water, but this is sticky. Mm. What is it, Lander? Well, I hope it's not. That guy didn't seem very clean. I'll leave it at that. You never do that, do you? <laughs> you'd, you'd, you'd think... You'd think he'd stoop so low. Oh no, it's not that. It seems to be sap from the Nadarin tree. It's a deadly poison. I knew it, Lander. They're trying to poison us. You should keep your voice down. This is used by assassins because of its lack of flavor and scent. To hell with this, Lander. It's no time to be silent. What are you suggesting, Torin? Don't do anything stupid. We need to find who it is. I'm going now. You either come with me or you stay here, Lander. As I walk up and rush out of the room. Oh no. Just to clarify, we haven't been given an option here. We need to angrily get up and leave the room and turn to section 200. I'm just adding my two endurance points for the previous two sections that didn't have a fight. Totally forgotten to recover them with oh, your Oh yeah, with yeah, your you, you, took a, you took a plank or a log or something to the face. So we're turning to section 200. No choices here. By the time the brothers reach the bar, the others are all seated at a large table awaiting their appearance. Drawing closer to the table, Torin realizes they have found their would-be assassin. Torin will have to attack without giving any warning to his enemy, to so study your fellow travelers carefully and then make your decision. So there's a picture with all the travelers and we need to decide who, just by looking at the picture, we need to decide who is our would-be assassin. Now as Torin is leading this, should I just do it on my own and if we if I screw up, I screw up? Yeah, I think you're going to have to. Okay. So you're not going to give me any help here, right? I mean, we can discuss if you want, but then the decision's going to be solely yours. So I imagine there's got to be a telltale sign, because it says you you know who you're... Just by seeing them all sitting there, Torin already knows who the assassin is. So there must be a giveaway sign. Oh, oh yeah, I just saw it. All right, I know who it is. Oh, wow, already? Yeah, <laughs> it's the first thing I looked at, and I, I just saw it. Shall I surprise you? I I literally don't see anything. I'll tell you who I'm going to uh, attack and and see what happens. I'm going to attack the priest called Parsion. So we need to turn to section 158. Ooh, attacking the priest. Going to share your logic? Do you want to see what happens or do you want to look closer? Oh, is it the snake tattoo on his wrist? Yeah, we found that snake tattoo on the guys that tried to kill us, remember? Yeah. In the harbor. It has to be him. Well spotted. Keen eye. The priest does not seem to be surprised by Torin's attack, and he draws a black sword from beneath his robes. This priest has a combat skill of 16, and his endurance points are doubled to 46. We are weaponless, and this could be, quite possibly, another failure in the story of Lander and Torin. Although we haven't really been given an option here, just calculating our combat ratios. Lander's is a minus 6. Oh, he's gonna die. He's gonna die. 
Torrens is a respectable one by comparison. But really, really low still. So given that Torrens is the one that's launched into this attack, I'm going to say you need to roll first. We should say that we take a minus four, we believe. Oh yeah, sorry, we haven't explained that. We've got minus four to our combat ratio, which has been taken into account in that calculation. Because we are unarmed, thanks to that damn storm. And for there being no weapons in Black Knight Street, but a stupid sage when we did not want to go down Sage Street, so very misleading. We're not entirely sure about the minus four ruling, but we've sort of based it off one of the, the battles we had where the Geax jumped us. And it said there, if we didn't have any weapons and one armed, we had to deduct four. So that is what we've done. Torin, first round of combat goes to you. Mm, this could start very badly. Oof, a five, so halfway there, not too good, not too bad. So as I punch the priest square on the nose, I deal eight damage to him. Not too bad for an unarmed attack. I do take two endurance points of damage, though, as I crack my knuckles on his big nose. So it's a lander. Oh my god. A one. Oh shit. The worst possible roll. With a minus six. With a minus six, yes. Oh damn. Lando rushes to his brother's aid. And he's caught off guard as he's stabbed by that black sword, dealing with six points of endurance damage and the enemy taking nil. <laughs> oh damn. Back over to Torin. Oh, I need to roll big here. Come on, zero. Oh! oh! A one as well. As Landa momentarily falls back after being pierced by the priest's sword, Torin takes an opportunity to attack him whilst he's distracted. I manage to land a blow, dealing full damage, but the priest quickly reacts and slashes at me as I lose five endurance points. Landa catches his breath. This time he's going to try and grab a chair and smack the priest over the head with it. That's better. That's a six. Good. But on a minus six, so I don't have high hopes for this. This time, Lander manages to land a blow on the priest, the chair glancing off his shoulder for five damage, but he returns the favor with the neck of his blade for four. The priest is down to 29 endurance points. Torin is currently at 15 and Lander at 21. This isn't looking good. We desperately need a 10 here. Oh, a three. We wasted all those high tens and nines on those random shots. <laughs> yeah, that's right. In the last episodes. Still, Torin deals six damage, taking only three in exchange. Not that bad. The priest does nick me with his sword again, but I manage to kick him across the face. Lander's going to take another swing with that chair. Come on, old goose egg. We want a ten. We want a ten. Oh, yeah! yes, we got it. Take that, bitch. The chair cracks on the back of the priest's skull, dealing him nine endurance points Ooh. as Landa escapes unscathed from that attack. Nice one. The priest is down to 14 hit points. He's almost on his last legs. Yeah, we need another one. Yeah, another 10, come on. Oh, oh not quite. But it teased us on the yeah. nine. It went from zero to nine and fell on the six. Not too bad. Torin springs off the table where all the other travelers are sitting at and with a huge crack uses his knee to make contact on the temple of this priest dealing a whopping nine damage receiving two in return as the priest clocks him on the side of the face Lander sees the priest doubled over after that blow he's breathing heavily his blood's pouring out of his mouth and down his nose Lander's gonna try and grab him by the nape of his neck and slam his face into the table that's a three the priest manages to gather his composure, slashing out at Lander for five damage, as Lander can only gently bump his face into the table for three. The priest is down to the last two endurance points. You got this, Al? Go in for the kill. Let's do this. As long as I don't roll a one, I think we got this. Oof. It's free. Thorin leaps up again, and this time grabs the priest with both hands by the back of the head. As the priest fumbles around, Torin uses the opportunity to thrust his skull through his own blade. As the blade pierces and exits the back of his head, the priest falls lifeless on top of the table, covering everyone around him in splutters of blood as everyone 
looks on in shock. We did it. We won. Barely. I'm left with seven endurance points. Landa's got 16. So we are in bad shape and we have no weapons. This is not looking good. Not at all. But we won the combat and we're turning to section 220. Searching the body, the brothers discover all they need to prove that he was the assassin. Inside his pockets they find a half-empty vial of Nadun sap, the deadly poison that was used to taint their food. Then there is a scroll written in Giak, giving details of your expected arrival in Port Bax. He must have located the brothers at Ragadorn and hatched his murder plans there. The brothers also notice that the weapon he carries is a Dark Lord blade, fashioned of black steel and forged in the furnaces of Helgadad, the infernal city of the Dark Lords beyond the Dunkrag Grange. Only there in all of vast Magnamund can black steel be made, but the final proof of his true identity is a serpent tattoo on his left wrist. The harbour thugs who had attempted to kill the brothers before they even left home guard bore the exact same mark. His purse contains 23 gold crowns which the brothers may keep and which we're going to promptly add to our action chart. It's a shame that we don't get to keep the sword though. Actually we can pick it up. The rules do say that if you find a weapon on your adventures you can pick it up. Well then that's great news. You can take it if you want. Yeah, my combat skill is significantly worse than yours. Mm -hmm. And also, because we have now completed a numbered section that has no fights, we get one endurance point back each. Very much needed. I knew it! He's the assassin! He killed the driver! I was trying to kill us too! What's about it, Torin? Keen eye to notice that tattoo on his left wrist. Thank you, Lander! What a fool to have it displayed for everyone to see! Can't say much about those knights. I thought they were supposed to defend. <clears throat> Perhaps they didn't know who to attack Lander. Let's give them the benefit of the doubt. I'll keep my eye on them as well. Strange they haven't intervened. You'd do well to do so. I mean, even if they didn't know who to attack, we were unarmed. Hmm. <clears throat> and he had a Dark Lord's blade. Surely they know what that is. Surely don't trust that Ganon, do you? Nope. Damn Gerudu bastard. <laughs> We've now got a choice here. We're turning to section 33. The other travellers stare in horror and disbelief at what the brothers have done. Before they can explain themselves, there is a loud crash as the front door is thrown open. In rush six armoured soldiers, led by the innkeeper. They are the town guard. And the one-eyed innkeeper is screaming at them to arrest you. Arrest them! They are the ones that attacked the poor priest! We've got two choices here. If we wish to fight them, six town guards, I may emphasize there and i don't have armor we don't have armor we i mean i've got a weapon now at least but even then my combat ratio is horrific compared to yours or alternatively and i think this is going to be the wise one this is what lander is going to want to do we escape by the rear door and turn to section 88 they are both rubbish options to be to be fair why, why not just give us housing and say hey look, like okay we don't want to fight let's talk about this you can check for yourself he has the tattoo he has a poison. I mean, why run away and why fight them? But yeah, given the options, I think running away is the only one that looks good, really. Yeah. Unless, I don't know, unless we fight them, but we don't really fight them in the, in the sense that they, or they don't really fight us. They just kind of defeat us and arrest us. And then we can kind of clear our name. If we escape, perhaps they'll start chasing us and then we don't have an option to... Mm. I've got a feeling that the fight is going to be a fight. Although I've, I've learned not to trust the options given to yeah, us. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if the fight is going to end up being like you try and fight them but are overwhelmed by them and are arrested or something like that. Whereas the escaping is going to be you run away and now we have a chase going on and we are fugitives, you know? Mm. And then we don't have an option to kind of discuss what went on in here. But it's a big risk either way. I mean... Fighting is a big risk, because as you say, it may be a fight and it's six guards. I mean, we have just murdered a guy, as far as they can tell. How are we going to prove that he was after us? Well, Do I'm... any of them read Giak? Are they going to trust our translation of it? Well, there's also the fact that someone killed the driver, although... Yeah, but they thought it was an accident. Yeah, let's run away. Yeah, I think we're going to have to escape by the rear door and turn to section 88. As the brothers turn... To flee from this inn. That's where we're going to leave you. Hanging. <laughs> Hanging. 
with the suspense of what will happen to Lander and Torin. Quite a tense episode as well. <laughs> yeah, it's looking bad for us, to be honest. Now we have fugitives in the run, possibly. Let's see what happens. Hopefully at some point, things are going to have to turn for the better. But you're going to have to wait till next week. And if you don't want to wait, and you still need to get your Into the Dungeon fix, head on over to www.i2td.com and visit our website. Once you're there, why not follow the links to our social media pages and, of course, to our Discord server. Pop down and say, howdy do. We'd love to engage with you and have a bit of a chat. Whilst you're on the website as well, why not visit our Buy Me A Coffee page, where you can make a one-off donation, buy us a potion, which in this game we're using as re-rolls, and this is an opportunity for you to be part of the stories we tell and to shape the adventure we play. Whilst you're there, why not check out our tiers, our membership tiers. By joining one of them, you will be able to receive extra episodes where we go over the episode we just played, and sometimes we even talk about, you know, um, our day-to-day, week-to-week stuff that is going on behind the scenes. So if you're interested in that, make sure to go there, check it out, and consider subscribing. If you cannot subscribe, become a member, or donate, do not worry, as you can still help us out tremendously by leaving a like, a comment, a rating in your podcast player of choice. Also follow us on YouTube and like our content, comment there. You know, give us a like, the usual stuff that gets the algorithm going and helping us to spread the word of Into the Dungeon, perhaps even in real life. Approach your friends and pester them to listen to some of our episodes. I assure you, as you well know, they will not regret it. We now move on to the end of the episode club. The last one standing. You know what to do by now, but if you are new to Into the Dungeon, this is where we give you a password and you use it in a comment on your podcast player of choice, YouTube, Discord, and it proves to us that you've stayed through to the very end of the episode and that you're worthy of competing for the esteemed title of El Guillo Masferrada. So, do you have a password for us today, Nick? Well, today's password is Predator. And what are the reasons? Well, there's reasons. You know, the priest was a predator of the Lone Wolves. Right. He was hunting them down. Yeah, makes sense. Using that sticky clear liquid to try and poison them and then thrust at them with a sword. Yeah, that dastardly priest almost had us. He almost had us, but he couldn't quite get us. Two young brothers against all odds. But we survived. We survived. And we live on for another tale of Joe Devers' Lone Wolf. Anyway, remember, password is Predator. Use it in a comment section and we'll read all of your comments. On that note, I think it's time to say goodnight. Goodnight. And farewell. Farewell. And hope you join us next time. Next time. As we delve into the dungeon. Sus as fuck. With a cumber. With a cumber. I do a hope, but we. <laughs> Number two, the old door, he says. <laughs> Number... Number two, the old door. The, the red door. The red door. <laughs> I can tell you sing and see. Actually, we can pick it up. The rules say that we find. Ad- Murder up. Love is on your shoulder.